Okay, so people are joining us. So, so we can wait a minute and then uh, Alberta could start. I don't think that I start. I think that, yeah, Alberta, not Alberta, sorry. Okay. Good evening. Uh, my name is Albert Alai. I'm the director of the Italian Cultural Institute in Prague. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you to a roundtable discussion on the impact of the pandemic on gender equality in Europe. Three speakers tonight will take part in the debate. Katarzyna Hari, president of Czech Moravian Association of Women Entrepreneurs and Managers. Sandra Logier, philosopher and professor at the Pantheon Sorbonne University in Paris. Massimiliano Mascherini, head of unit for social policy at Eurofund, European Foundation for the Improvement of Living and Working Conditions. The debate will be moderated by Alspieta Kralova, founder and director of the Prague-based Women's Business Academy. Tonight's uh, webinar is organized by our Italian Cultural Institute in cooperation with the French Institute and the Czech centers in Prague and is part of a European project called Ideas Yard, talking about Europe under the auspices of the Prague Unique Cluster funded by a Unique Global. I have vir virtually next to me my colleagues, uh, Luisa Ratz, Goethe Institute, uh, Sarah Douagnon, uh, French Institute, and Rachel Henalova, uh, Czech Centers in Prague. In, I will now uh, pass the mic to Luisa Ratz, Goethe Institute, who will briefly present and describe Ideas Yard project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alberta, and um, welcome to all of you. Uh, Alberta has already mentioned that this talk tonight is part of our project, Ideas Yard Talking About Europe, which is a series of events like this one, um, podium discussions with different voices from all over Europe on topics that um, really are impacting all of us. So for example, sustainability, freedom and democracy, as well as innovation and education. And we have been holding uh, a few of these events throughout the last year already and are fortunate enough to continue with the series of events this year. So I'm looking forward to this particular panel and also others to come. Which leads me to a second point that I would just like to inform all of you about. Um, our today's topic um, we found was very interesting and inspired us to actually have two discussions on, on this topic of the pandemic and how um, it impacted gender equality in our societies. So I would like to invite you to the second part of this talk, which will be held next Monday at the same time. And we will have panelists um, from the UK, Mia Bays, um, a Spanish speaker, Fatima Año, as well as a German speaker, Lena Hip. Um, and now all um, that I've left to say is to thank the colleagues one more time um, tonight, especially the French um, the Czech centers, as well as Alberta, who has initiated this talk, so the Italian Cultural Forum. And um, I wish us all an inspiring and um, very interesting evening. And um, I pass the word on. Uh, thank you, thank you, Luisa. Um, I will ask uh, uh, my colleague Sara Duagnon to say a few words as an introduction and to um, witness also the, the, the fact that this is a, a co-organization um, co of the event has been co-organized with the French Institute as well. Please. Thank you very much, um, Alberta. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everybody. 
Bonsoir. Um, just a few words to say uh, first thank you and to mention that uh, on March the 8th, so one week ago, we celebrated Women's Rights Day and that one year ago, uh, France alongside with Mexico had to postpone a major event inviting thousands of citizens to the Generation Equality Forum, which is the large, largest gathering uh, for gender equality organized by uh, Women EU, UN, since Beijing conference in 1995. So one year later, it is clear that the global COVID pandemic has further exacerbated inequalities and disproportionately affected women who were on the front line on the fight against the pandemic. This is why we are very pleased uh, to announce today that the Generation Equality Forum will eventually take place from June the 30th to um, the July the 2nd in Paris after uh, a sequence in Mexico this spring. So France will bring together uh, states, international organizations, civil societies, youth, the private sector and uh, activists from all around the world to make a series of uh, concrete, ambitious and uh, sustainable commitments. So while waiting for this uh, key meeting, we are at the French Institute extremely happy to contribute to this uh, European reflection in Czech Republic alongside our uh, European counterparts. So I'd like um, very much to thank warmly my colleagues from the Italian Institute, from the Czech centers, from Goethe Institute who have invited us to be part of this uh, IDS yard and to raise the issue of the gender equality, which has become a priority for our diplomacy. And I would like also on a personal note, thank uh, very much particularly and warmly uh, Mrs. Sandra Logier for accepting our invitation. Um, this eminent researcher actively contributes to the fight for the improvements of women's rights and her voice and her work are very precious and necessary to us as it is for the entire body of researchers, if we shall <laughs> underline at this moment. So I'm therefore looking forward to it and um, uh, thank you very much and looking forward to hear you all tonight. Have a great panel. Thank you, Sara. And now uh, I leave uh, the floor and the mic to Azdieta Kranova. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And let me welcome everyone who joined us uh, for today's discussion. Uh, thank you very much, Sara, Alberta, and Luisa for your introduction. And let me go straight uh, to our topic. It's a pleasure to have you all here. And I think more people will join us during uh, the upcoming hour. And the topic of, this, uh, of uh, today's debate is the impact of pandemic on gender equality. And one more warmest welcome to our amazing guests. Uh, let me welcome here uh, Katarzyna Haring, president of Czech Moravian Association of Women Entrepreneurs and Managers and CEO of Dynamic Group. Uh, as mentioned, uh, Sandra Logier, French philosopher and professor at Panton Sorbonne University in Paris, and Massimiliano Mascherini, head of unit and interim of, for social policies of Eurofound. So uh, as we know, the COVID-19 pandemic has worsened the situation for many women in terms of health, employment, and unpaid, unpaid work. Uh, resulting in uh, increased levels of poverty, debt, and mental health uh, deterioration. A lot of women have to work from home, so they have a home office, but they have to manage everything at the same time. They become teachers, they have to manage households, and so on. They do everything also from one environment and have to balance everything in their lives, uh, sometimes even at the same time. They also have to switch when they have to be assertive at work, negotiate with clients, then do humber, home, homework with their child or children uh, and prepare everything in the household and still uh, arrange everything at the same time. So I believe that it's very relevant topic at the moment since the pandemic has shaken us globally and affected all of us in some way. So now I'm already very curious about our panelists' thoughts and opinions regarding this topic. 
and let me ask first question. And I would be grateful if each of our panelists today could share her and his opinion. So my first question uh, is what is the impact actually uh, of the COVID-19 crisis or on women? So I would like to give the floor to uh, Sandra Logier, please, if you can share your ideas with, uh, with us. Okay, I, I can start. Uh, obviously, this pandemic has been very revealing and it's kind of paradoxical because as you say, a woman have been somehow the center uh, of attention and of conversation because everyone noticed, you know, the hard work they were doing. So for example, uh, taking care uh, of sick people in hospitals, but also, as you say, uh, do, doing all this frontline work, like being cashiers uh, at stores, or, you know, all kind of services they, they do. And, and so they were somehow maybe more visible because everybody understood that care work is what keeps everyone going and that care work is also everywhere in the world you know very uh, underpaid and very often done for free so there has been a kind of uh, maybe a better awareness of the role of women and also everyone and uh, of course men also because they were the majority of the sick people uh, but women too uh, somehow uh, also uh, understood they were vulnerable. So this kind of, you know, awareness of a radical vulnerability uh, for everyone, even people who feel, you know, very strong and independent, they understand that they also are uh, very dependent. So there was first this awareness of care and the role of women and the help in uh, everyday lives. There is also and awareness of, as you just say, everything the woman had to take care of. You know, we had usually the sociologists or women's gender studies people, they speak about women's double shift because they have to go to work and to take care of their homes. But now we had also, you know, homeschooling. We had also, you know, giving phone calls to take care of the family, you know, to give news and so on. So it was like a quadruple shift <laughs> instead of a double uh, of a double shift. And so there's this whole uh, uh, acknowledgement of women's work, but also uh, a life that is, is made much more difficult and uh, also, I think that this is what I uh, noticed, the fact that women, even if they were very visible, they were totally invisible as a political voice. I mean, they never, no one asks the uh, woman, you know, to make decisions. And I don't know if it, how it is, uh, you know, uh, here where you are, but, uh, I, but in France, you only see men everywhere talking and women doing the, the work. So there's a kind of, you know, uh, visibilization of patriarchy in the present situation that is, you know, it shouldn't uh, have happened this way because it could have been the moment when everyone understands that it's really time to uh, give women uh, better, better pays and, you know, to give them uh, a voice. And it's somehow even worse for me and, 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 uh, than, than it was. So I'm a little pessimistic, as you say, but it was just to, uh, as an introduction. <laughs> okay, uh, Sandra, thank you very much for opening. Uh, Katerina, if I can ask you to answer the, also this question, what is the impact of COVID-19 crisis on women? Are you uh, same pessimistic as uh, Sandra or do you have also some optimistic uh, ideas or experience which you could share with us tonight? Unfortunately, everything you name, named is uh, really true and it's really unbelievable, unbelievable how much uh, society has changed in this last year because, uh, but not only for women, the current situation is really very challenging in all the intentions, uh, as you name them, homework, childcare, household. 
and uh, based on the data provided by our association and also by a worldwide uh, association of uh, women entrepreneurs among our members, we found that uh, the women entrepreneurs gave up on average up to two hours a day at the expense of doing a business. And these two hours uh, every day they spent for housework, family, uh, keep chat. And this is quite enough, yeah. And unfortunately also 17% of women entrepreneurs according to our survey said that uh, their income from their business activities decreased by 70 to 90%. And 25% of asked uh, entrepreneurs, ladies, I mean, lost 50 to 60% of their turnover of the year. And I think that is really quite a lot. And if you imagine now women uh, in such a situation, from one side, she should restart her business, looking for new opportunities. And from the other side, of course, uh, she should still keep housework, household, uh, take care of the family, uh, looking at older uh, relations, uh, I mean, parents sometimes, and they are in the sandwich rows, which is not very easy. And uh, I, I, I see that this is not very um, equal uh, conditions for ladies. So, and combinations of all these uh, situations is almost suicide uh, for women. Uh, no free time, uh, permanent stress, uh, also uh, giving you not a good opportunity and uh, conditions for your well being, mental health. And uh, of course, it's not only for women, but also for men, but uh, we so see mainly uh, women in these situations. So I'm not so, so also not very optimistic. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, I also know quite enough cases uh, when women have given up their careers and jobs mm -hmm. because their husbands earn much more uh, money than uh, the ladies and uh, therefore they are uh, they leave their jobs and devoted themselves to the families and this will maybe mean in the future even a bigger pay gap between men and women in the future and uh, some uh, research in comparisons uh, which were made after the crisis in 2008 uh, shows that uh, women's positions were already more affected and uh, women were much uh, often losing their jobs. Uh, but the, the crisis in 2008 was a much more economic crisis. Now we have a really crisis, which is a social crisis. Uh, it's a crisis of the health. And uh, we don't see uh, the light uh, after the tunnel, yes, because the tunnel is not, uh, is not uh, straight. And uh, even the new uh, research, uh, for example, research of United Nations, which were published last year, uh, shows that uh, women from the age of 44 are much more at risk of losing their jobs. For me, this is uh, not a high age. I mean, it's a really young age for, for uh, women because this is the age when a woman is uh, in the most productive period as yes, they usually have already <clears throat> the children who have grown up and uh, so uh, they could really devote themselves more uh, into the, her career and uh, to give much more to the society. So um, I think that the, the crisis of losing jobs uh, in current pandemics is uh, very challenging, uh, not only mentally, but it could be really in the future the, the worst problems we are going to face, uh, face in. So, uh, and unfortunately, even if you try to be very optimistic, uh, as I see, I don't see at the moment the light in the end, but uh, uh, the hardest thing is uh, uh, 
you know, uh, it, it's not a question if you live in Europe, in America, in Australia, because the situation is all around the world almost the same. So this is my point of view, and I hope that we could uh, improve uh, grace to this discussion or the grace to discussion like this evening to improve our uh, our situations and change our opinions. So this is my point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katerina, for sharing uh, not such a positive data, but very realistic one. So we know that uh, it's, uh, it's uh, really an issue. And I would, I would like to give the floor to Massimiliano, if he can share his opinion on this question with us, please. The, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, uh, and uh, uh, thanks a lot for the invitation and greetings from from Dublin and uh, uh, where I am actually. Uh, yes, I can just uh, uh, agree with what uh, was said uh, earlier. Uh, the <clears throat> the COVID nineteen fallout actually uh, uh, takes a higher toll on women, both economically and uh, and domestically. Uh, let's say that uh, twelve months ago, the COVID nineteen crisis started as an health crisis, but then, uh, with the months passing, uh, it became an health, uh, an economic, and uh, a societal crisis, and it's like a kind of uh, of Kerberos, you know, the, the guardian of the hay, the, the three dog hound actually that had the three heads, and this is the crisis that we have that we have at the moment. And in this, actually, while women uh, seems uh, uh, from the health data are more resilient than men uh, in terms of the health crisis, uh, they actually are uh, paying a higher tool uh, when it comes from, to uh, the economic and in the social fallout. Uh, this because uh, the uh, measures taken by governments in an attempt to control the pandemic, as for example, the lockdown or restrictive measures uh, that involve the closure of schools uh, are, uh, are actually tending to exacerbate the gender divide uh, among men and women uh, in terms of employment, domestic labor and, and financial security, for example. Uh, so if we focus actually, actually in this first question on, on the employment side, uh, what we saw in uh, the, de the developed world actually was that the rise in uh, unemployment uh, in this crisis was higher for women than, than for men. And uh, uh, for example, uh, in Europe, uh, in, uh, we passed from an unemployment rate of men that was a 6.2% in March 2020 uh, to the 7% in January 2021, uh, while for women uh, we moved from 6.8 to 7.7. .7. So uh, there were an increase in uh, unemployment that was higher among women, uh, as well as a campaign with an increase in the inactivity rate of women against against the increase the increase for men and the same the same phenomenon was observed actually in the united states uh, where uh, the uh, the increase for women actually was uh, still higher than for men moving from 4.2 to 6.1% but with a spike of 15.7% in the first months of the pandemic. So uh, let's say that this crisis in terms of employment participation uh, is very different from the crisis of 2008, actually. Uh, and the reason is the sectorial uh, 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 nature of, of this crisis. Uh, in 2008, actually, the sectors that were hit were mainly the manufacturing sectors that were male-dominated sectors. On the other hand, uh, with this crisis, uh, actually, the sectors that has been hit the most uh, are uh, the hospitality sector, the retail sectors, all sectors that actually are uh, dominated by, by women. And uh, for this reason, actually, uh, the impact of unemployment is, is higher. And uh, uh, there are concerns also uh, about, about the future. Uh, this also uh, because, uh, uh, I mean, the closure of schools uh, put uh, a great, uh, a great uh, 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 strain on, 
on women that teleworked actually uh, because uh, uh, they had then to take care of the family as well as uh, of, of the working life. So there were an emergence and an explosion of the work-life conflicts, especially for women with, uh, with young children. Uh, but I think that this will uh, need uh, a, a long elaboration, actually, that we are going to have it uh, in the, in the, in the follow-up uh, uh, questions, probably, that we can then focus a little bit more on that because it's a very important aspect of this crisis. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you, Massimiliano, for sharing your thoughts on uh, this topic. Ladies, would you like to react on Massimiliano on each other, or each other? No? Okay. Yeah, maybe I add uh, something okay. because I'm very grateful to Massimiliano to have also highlighted the not only what is happening now, but the risk for later, because now we have a health crisis, and as Massimiliano said, then we are going to have, if you know, if things get better, which you know, of, of course we hope so, but it's going to be very hard on women and much harder than on men, because you already have many women losing their jobs, and there is no, uh, uh, there has been no change in the value we give to all these jobs that I call care care work, because. Uh, you know, it's also connected to this whole idea of care and the ethics of care is also a feminist uh, conception that really uh, wants to highlight this very uh, important uh, role of women uh, in everyday life and also in making, you know, life possible for everyone else now. And I think all these uh, jobs are underpaid, but also it's really connected to you know, patriarchy and the fact that all these jobs are somehow an extension of the domestic sphere, you know, so they are undervalued for gender reasons because they are, you know, connected to women doing work for, for free somehow. And so it's really not possible for governments right now to actually value these jobs as they should be, you know, they should get some important raises. And I know, for example, in France, I don't know what's the case, uh, you know, in Italy uh, and Czechoslovakia, but uh, I, I thought, uh, you know, there has been a raise for a uh, woman uh, in the, you know, um, care, care workers in the, in the hospital, at, at, uh, health, uh, people who take care of health, but there has been no raise at all for you know cleaners or delivers uh, the uh, deliver people and so on so other people who actually take care of the other people and who are in a great majority women didn't get any uh, raise and they are uh, you know on the, all these professions are really uh, women uh, in majority so I just want to uh, thank to you. This to, to gender a little more. <laughs> thank you, Sandra, a lot. Uh, I would really like to ask a second question right now because we know that uh, not all women are impacted the same way. So, what is the situation of young women with children given the closure of schools? And what is the situation of women in first line professions uh, in care work? And why are women expected to take care of the household even when men are at home too? <laughs> so maybe uh, Katerina, if you can start. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's it's a big question because uh, my personal experience uh, from the, my close uh, surroundings shows mm -hmm. different uh, cases, and uh, it really depends if. Uh, um, a woman works uh, uh, in a hospital or if she is a teacher or she is uh, running her own business, it's really dif different. Uh, and uh, of course, they all divide themselves between uh, homework, uh, home office, uh, if they have a children uh, to keep children uh, on a online lessons and of course if uh, young um, uh, ladies uh, should do all these things uh, I'm afraid that they are not quite uh, 
effective in their jobs. And of course, we are expecting to do the job much more uh, quicker, uh, much more effective than men. Because if you would like to, uh, uh, to be on the top, you should keep uh, you should keep your speed uh, with, with the man, and you should do twice or three times much more than uh, than uh, men. It's it's not a feminism; it's a fact. So, I, I see that the, uh, this is the, the the real challenge for all of us because uh, if you see, and it's very often uh, among uh, my friends that uh, they divide they. Um, focus bit, uh, uh, between children and between uh, uh, the home office, uh, they should, uh, uh, they, they see that their children uh, are maybe even going to lose the social skills. And uh, uh, if we, we are short of the time, we push the children much to, uh, uh, and they spend much more time on the social nets, which, which is not very good for them. And it's not very good for uh, their health uh, development. And I mean, mentally and physically as well. And uh, this is the challenge, yes, because uh, if uh, uh, experienced uh, ladies on the senior uh, management positions uh, have already grown up children uh, of course they have much more time but they should also divide between household and they work because they already used to be very hard working ladies in their jobs and now you uh, you you don't have any me time yes, as as i told uh, already and uh, you try to do your best to be efficient at a ha home office uh, during your ha housekeeping and so on so and we all have a lack of uh, contacts and uh, social networks and uh, Skype or Zoom doesn't replace it because it's not enough and we are all very tired uh, around, uh, around this. And unfortunately, I should also say that uh, from my immediate surroundings, I also uh, know some cases when disappointed uh, young person even reach for their life or try to do so. And it's alarming. It's really something uh, which uh, we are uh, facing now maybe even more than before. And uh, I think it's lack of uh, uh, they attending uh, in the schools. Of course, in Czech Republic, we have quite different situation with the schools than the rest of, of the Europe. And uh, this COVID generation of children, uh, uh, how they are started to be called now, uh, could really uh, face to really irreversible changes to their physical and mental health, uh, which is alarming uh, for me. And uh, I think it's not very good. So we should try to return the children back to school in Czech Republic, because this is the main and the worst uh, question, if I say something like this. So did, did I answer to your question, Alžbeta? Yes, you did, Katerina. Thank you. Even if, if the situation and the data you describe is, is everything is very alarming, mm -hmm. but thank you so much for sharing. And uh, Massimiliano, if you could answer the same question, please. Yes, thanks a lot. Uh, let's say that uh, when we think to the 2008 to 2013 uh, recession uh, crisis, uh, uh, the victim of the crisis were young people uh, because they had the rate of unemployment that skyrocketed. Uh, in this crisis, uh, I would say that uh, the possible victim of the crisis are unfortunately young women, women with children. Uh, this is the population that actually was hit uh, the hardest, both in terms of uh, unemployment, but also in terms uh, of uh, the lockdown measures. And, uh, and uh, in fact, actually, uh, okay, a part of them have lost their job, actually, unfortunately, uh, but uh, uh, the other part actually went teleworking uh, among those who were not working for, for, for healthcare, for example. And there, the closure of schools really made, made, uh, this made explode the work-life balance. Uh, and if we consider women and men, both with the children age uh, uh, less than 11 years old, actually, uh, we saw that uh, 
this, this, this circle of telework and taking care of the education of children was really explosive because uh, what we saw is that uh, women had a very higher rate than, than men in the same condition of household condition uh, in indicators like uh, they find it hard to concentrate uh, uh, on job because of family. Uh, to this question, according to our survey on living, working and COVID, one third of women with children had the problems to concentrate to job because of the family against 11% of men. And uh, at the question that family prevents giving time to job, uh, uh, only 7% of men replied this against the 26% of women. I mean, 26% is almost four times larger than uh, than, uh, than, than the men, the men counterparts. And uh, uh, we also investigated in our survey the time uh, that uh, men and women with children were spending uh, in doing houseworks uh, and dedicating time for children, actually. And in these, uh, we saw that uh, before the crisis, uh, there were around, around 39 hours per uh, week uh, were actually dedicated by women uh, to, uh, to uh, spend caring for children. This became around 61 during the pandemic crisis, almost double. Uh, whereas uh, the one of men actually passed from 17 to 30. So it was an increase, of course, also for men, but you know, the gap of 61 hours is just huge, actually, it's just unbearable. And, uh, and this actually brings uh, uh, problems about the future, as uh, Sandra was saying, because, uh, and we also see from some other, other surveys uh, that the struggle of women to keep working and taking care of the family uh, in times of closure of schools. And uh, there were some data actually in Italy uh, showing that a large proportion that I think was uh, one third of the respondents said that if uh, this closure of school could uh, uh, keep, uh, probably it would not be possible to combine a school, a school and, and, uh, and work. So uh, uh, indicating uh, the propensity of leaving actually the job if this uh, situation could, uh, could also uh, continue. And, uh, and then if I may, if I may add actually, uh, these also, we also found the implications of these closure of schools in the mental well-being of men and women. Uh, with women that are much more uh, uh, vulnerable in terms of uh, feeling tensions. And we found, uh, for example, that 23% uh, uh, of women uh, felt tense during the lockdown against uh, less than 20% of men. Uh, and 15% uh, uh, of women felt depressed against less than 9% of men. So this is, uh, this is actually a numbers that uh, create quite uh, some concerns actually regarding the future as well as uh, uh, regarding the condition of, of women that work uh, in, in uh, during the pandemic. Uh, of course, we could reflect uh, on the closure of schools uh, on pupils actually, which is detrimental as well uh, with the raise of inequalities among pupils that come from a privileged background and those who comes from a non-privileged background because the human capital and the share of knowledge actually can can exacerbate also here as well. But uh, in order to conclude, I wanted to dedicate the last thought to those who have lost their job, actually, because uh, uh, there is, a, there is a, a big difference, actually, in financial security of men and women, actually, and the financial independence of men, of men and women. It is of particular concern, actually, for those, uh, for those uh, women that have lost their job is the financial fragility actually, that, uh, that they, may, they may find. We found in our study uh, that uh, uh, around 42% of women with the children uh, had, uh, had basically uh, no savings uh, to go on in case they lost, uh, they lose their job, actually, uh, against, uh, against uh, the 30% of men. Uh, so this is, uh, of course, is uh, similar for women and men with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, without children, but uh, this is to show actually that ensuring the labor market participation of women in the aftermath of the crisis is of incredible importance in order to uh, ensure financial independence of women 
in order to be uh, to be independent and then uh, to uh, fully participate uh, to the labor market as well as to the entire society as well. Actually. Thank you. Massimiliano, thank you very much for sharing the data from the survey and all uh, what you have mentioned is very interesting and very important. I think that like psychological effects of pandemic is another huge topic, which should be also examined more deeply, as you mentioned. So Sandra, if you, if you can uh, also answer this question. Yes, thank you. Uh, actually, really, uh, everything has been said, but I wanted to add a few things. I think the uh, mental health uh, toll is really important. And for women, it's something that is specifically hard because as someone said in the chat also, because women are so exhausted, they cannot do anything, for example, for their education, not to from, you know, for political commitment and other things. So, so there's something that is really, uh, really unequal here. And we can say, of course, I, uh, Massimilio was so right to tell that women for, you know, you know, with younger children have been so impacted because they have to, you know, do uh, everything in the same space and take care of children and Zoom with the employers. And so, so this is a huge, um, a huge pressure. But I think it's also on uh, many, I mean, all women, many women, many, uh, even, you know, older women <laughs> can also be uh, impacted because they are also uh, more, uh, more vulnerable. And also, even if it's a different question, you know, we have noticed in the academic world that, you know, men have been publishing even more than before because they are at home. So they have, you know, some time left, obviously. And women, uh, pro you know, publication have dropped like 50% uh, during the last, uh, the last month. So I think it's a very significant uh, thing because it also means that they are less present in the intellectual and in the, in the public space. And there are also other, uh, other um, things that are very uh, surprising because as you said, everyone is at home. So it should be the right moment when, you know, people should share the domestic work. And actually in, Fr in France, but I think it's the same everywhere, probably in Italy or the Czech, Czech Republic. Actually, um, men uh, have not been doing their share of domestic work at all. And it's even been worse than before somehow, because since women are back at home, you know, they come back, there's this whole uh, patriarchal structure that somehow comes back and they are expected to do uh, everything uh, that because there is this whole, uh, and this is very obvious from a feminist point of view, but because the fact that, you know, at home, there is this kind of hierarchy and, uh, and this structure where uh, it's a really woman who do the job. So uh, I just wanted to stress that, that it's not that it hasn't changed. It's been really worse. And actually most of the fights and conflicts at home, uh, apparently there was a survey in France, it's really about this, disproportionate amount of domestic work for women. And I also wanted to add uh, that uh, there is also, there's also been this um, much, this worsening uh, of uh, domestic violence. And this is something that has been, uh, that has been said already, but uh, in France there is like 30% more calls for the hotline for domestic violence because with, you know, being confined and locked down, uh, at home, the women don't really know where to go. And also when the, with the kids, when they have small kids at home, they cannot leave them. You know, it's not like uh, when they are at school or when there's daycare. So there's also this big rise uh, in uh, domestic violence. So I think there has been lots of, uh, lots of difficulties uh, for, for women. So, uh, yeah. and it's really important because uh, it's not something that is acknowledged because you only see um, men in the hospitals who are, you know, uh, ill, and 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 it has been there has been this focus on that, and so there's this kind not only 
the situation for women, which is really worsened, but there's this an invisibility of this situation that is really not acknowledged. Thank you very much, Sandra. So there is not public awareness about women's situation and side effects uh, on women because of this pandemic uh, situation and COVID-19. Thank you so much. So uh, maybe I, I will ask Katerina if she can start to uh, answer my uh, third question. If we can generalize or do we see different trends in different countries? So uh, we have uh, France here, uh, Italy and Czech Republic. So maybe we can uh, share what is your experience uh, with Czech Republic, Katerina? Thank you. Uh, you know, maybe the one uh, year ago when the Italy was uh, unfortunately the worst uh, uh, in Europe and Czech Republic was announced as, as the, the best in Europe, you know, uh, the situation completely changed. And now is the Czech Republic who is the worst uh, uh, in Europe. But maybe even regarding to your previous uh, um, question, I would like to just a short notice because uh, one more, more thing uh, what I see and the problem is that uh, uh, the young people uh, who are now in schools and universities uh, and uh, very soon they will be the main donors uh, to the pension systems in our countries in the close future. And of course, they should uh, try to give the best education uh, which uh, we are able to give them and maybe the highest possible qualification to have uh, higher incomes because from their incomes, uh, they will contribute to the state's pensions and social security system. And of course, they will pay much uh, higher taxes. And if we don't take a care about this to reach much more and higher payable uh, jobs, we could have a problem with financing these systems because all our governments are in a debt. Yes, because it all costs quite enough money and we should do our best to try to make our young people and generation much more disciplined to, uh, to get the best education they are able to do because uh, they, there is the additional value they would uh, like and they should and will, they will be expect to bring to our systems. And uh, of course, uh, uh, one more point which I am warning about is that we are going to lose uh, some democracy in uh, Czech Republic because uh, it's not about uh, losing some rights uh, due to uh, the restrictions, of course, we should keep them, but uh, maybe uh, young people who are not having uh, 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 experience uh, from totalitarian regime, uh, they don't see any Mm, they don't see uh, the points and the steps which your uh, Czech government is uh, doing uh, at the moment. And maybe uh, if we don't take care about these uh, moments, uh, we are really at the edge to, uh, to lose it because it's quite enough undemocratic practices in verbal and nonverbal communi communications. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a type of intimidation, manipulation, false information, non-transparency. Uh, this is what I see, which is going from our, from our government uh, to the whole society. And uh, this could have a really very negative effect uh, to our society and maybe to some uncritical accepts uh, for non-essential non regulations. So what could help uh, is uh, maybe much more activities like this one, because thank you very much that I could be a part of, uh, of it this evening, because I feel that the uh, uh, possibility of sharing experience, what is working in a one country, another country, across our cultures, uh, across uh, uh, different mm -hmm. disciplines, could really uh, open good discussions about the situation and about the current situation. 
and uh, I think it could bring, uh, uh, and we should try it maybe to bring these to uh, ears to our politicians. And uh, this is maybe our goal to uh, to uh, to do such a things uh, because people who find uh, the strength to fight it and uh, don't to give up, uh, and they, which are good example to others and uh, fight even for the poor ones and for the children uh, should uh, uh, have a good voice in a society. And uh, I also dare to say that we must strive at this time uh, in our children to sow love of neighbor through compassion, belonging and cooperation because without these attributes, uh, no society will move on. And uh, as I like to say, every society is only as strong as mm -hmm. its uh, weakest link is. So we must try not to indifferent mm -hmm. fate of our neighbor friends, because if we help each other, everyone will be helped. And even the poorest of us will be much better off. Mm -hmm. And so will be all the society. So without cohesion, cooperation, and mutual support, we will not move. So please, we must each start with ourselves and uh, in our immediate surrounding. And I also believe, because I wouldn't want to uh, finish uh, uh, some pessimistic way, so I think that uh, we just to keep on uh, to having and founding our faith, hope, and love. So thank you. Thank you, Katerina, so much uh, for sharing uh, these thoughts. I think that all of us, we need these supporting words and motivation to survive this pandemic and uh, uh, this uh, crazy period of, uh, of time we are living in. So Massimiliano, what is your experience from Italy, if you can share with us? Yes, thanks a lot, actually. Uh, it's difficult for me to talk about one country because basically I'm Italian, but I don't live in Italy. I live, uh, I li I live in Ireland. So, uh, but thanks to the lockdown, I have spent uh, several months actually in Italy as well. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, the situation uh, is more or less uh, similar in all, uh, in all the member states of the European Union. Uh, we have an uh, asynchronized uh, crisis uh, that uh, the different waves arrive in the countries at different times. But unfortunately, uh, we have observed that they arrive everywhere. Uh, so all, all the countries actually have, uh, have uh, uh, found the same, the, same, the same problems, actually. Uh, and this closure of schools uh, that was a, a quite extreme uh, uh, decision that Italy took uh, as the first country in March 2020, then has been implemented more or less in, mod, in all the member states. And it brings, it brings really, really uh, uh, implications for, for everyone, for women, for men, but also for, for children. Uh, we know that other countries like the United Kingdom actually has applied uh, <clears throat> different approaches, for example, schools for frontline front workers uh, mm -hmm. in order to ease the situation of the frontline workers that can leave uh, the children in the schools. Uh, but, uh, so, but apart from these different changes, actually, the situation is common to all the member states and I would say also to the United States. Uh, I would like actually to spend to spend a, a few words on on young people actually, uh, as Katerina Katerina uh, said uh, said earlier, and uh, I have I have advertised our survey in uh, in the chat box because uh, all the data that I have mentioned comes from our survey that uh, had already uh, more than one hundred and fifty thousand uh, respondents uh, since March last year. So. It is really the largest uh, survey that uh, there is in Europe on living, working, and COVID. And yes, young people are suffering a lot, actually. Young people uh, are another victim of the crisis, especially those that are really young, actually. So our teenagers, for example, because uh, <clears throat> they suffer uh, they suffer uh, the lockdown in terms of uh, mental health, and uh, they are the population mostly hit in terms of mental health uh, uh, by the lockdown measures, and then in human capital uh, accumulations. 
because uh, the closure of schools actually uh, uh, brought uh, uh, work learning from home. And actually learning from home has been proved scientifically in, acad in academic publications before the crisis that attending schools anyway has a direct effect on human capital accumulation and also on the marks that, that, that young people received. And then the closure of schools also bring to an increase in inequalities because, um, because uh, parents have a different set of knowledge that they can share uh, with young people, uh, as well as uh, a different set of tools. So for example, uh, good internet connections that we may, uh, we may assume that everyone has. Well, this is not the case. There are families, unfortunately, that did not even had a computer. So uh, this, uh, this, uh, the measure of closing the schools actually exacerbated these inequalities, putting actually problems regarding the future actually of the so-called COVID generation, which is horrible to call it COVID generation. But one thing, uh, and then I'll conclude actually, that uh, we observe in our survey is the trust. And in this regard, actually, young people are still the population that has more trust in the national governments as well as uh, in the European Union. And it's very important that this is precious social capital, th that is the trust that young people has in our institution is not wasted. Uh, because wasting that capital at a very young age, as I said earlier, it will create incredible problems for the future of our democracies and the future of our societies. So it is very important that the governments implement measures in order to support young people in the aftermath of, of the crisis, but also during the crisis, because you know, uh, compliance to restrictive measures, which is a key in order to make the restrictive measures as effective, uh, it is based on institutional trust. So if we don't have institutional trust, people won't comply to the measures and the measures will be just uh, uh, damaging the economies without bringing the, uh, the uh, uh, hoped uh, results in terms of, in terms of, uh, of effect in, in smoothing the impact of the crisis. What we have in front of us is the hope that uh, uh, vaccination uh, campaign could be rolled out uh, and quickly uh, and and we can actually uh, defeat uh, defeat the virus by acquiring this herd immunity but also here uh, and then i'm really conclude actually communication of science and policy makers is essential uh, because what we saw in our surveys as a preliminary preliminary results of our third round is that uh, uh, from almost uh, uh, the 20 percent of Europeans are very skeptical about that and uh, has uh, actually uh, a concern over vaccinations and do not feel that they are likely to get a vaccination and this actually creates anyway then problems so a transparent communication of, of scientists and policymakers would be very important in order to implement successfully this campaign thank you thank you, thank you very much Mastriano it was uh, uh also positive uh, with uh, communication we know that uh, communication is everything and we hope that all our governments uh, will improve their communication regarding uh, a pandemic and uh, vaccination campaigns uh, so sandra would you like uh, to react very shortly because we are uh, no. getting uh, yeah, but because uh, um, um, of course everything has been said by Katarina and Massimiliano, so, but I just want to add uh, something from a you know, general point of view also, uh, from the moral point of view, because we had at the beginning of the pandemic the impression that there was this kind of very universal crisis with everyone could, could be impacted and could get sick. So there was this, this kind of equality, but now we understand that, you know, there's no equality even in the COVID. We see it with the vaccine, Massimiliano was saying about, you know, access to vaccine is very different if you compare uh, the countries. Also, we have seen that all these frontline uh, workers, um, women, a lot are much more impacted uh, by uh, the virus. So, and also there's this kind of structure of, uh, the global society where some people are, you know, say that they are called essential, but actually their life is not considered as, essen as essential at all and they are put at risk when others are protected. So there's this kind of universal vulnerability at start, but now we can see 
that this uh, vulnerability is very, uh, very uh, unequal, very, very different. And I think this is really uh, a lesson. And in France, for example, uh, we know that the mortality from COVID has been very different for people born abroad, for foreigners, than for those born in France. And there's this department near Paris, Saint-Saint-Denis, uh, in the north of Paris, where there has been a high excess mortality rate because it's inhabitants were working frontline works and there's some poverty and they were using public transports to get to work so actually you know really uh, there's a huge inequality also in life and death and i think that we should remind remember this but even uh, in france it's obvious but uh, you mentioned massimiliano mentioned the united states where uh, you uh, all know that, you know, uh, black people have been also hit like twice or three times more by, by uh, the virus. And so there is something that we really uh, should be uh, aware that there are lots of, uh, of inequalities. And when there are some inequalities and also some intersectionality issues everywhere in the world, because women who are not white are much more impacted than the others economically and also uh, by COVID. So I wanted to, to remind this and also, also to try to have a more optimistic conclusion. I think we, uh, as we said, women are, you know, too uh, invisible and they don't have a voice. So there's really uh, the impression that we have this patriarchal society where men decide what is important, what is essential, and when women are actually doing, uh, doing the work. And so there's uh, a real political issue here. And I think what is needed, obviously, is more women uh, in power, uh, because this is something that has been obvious in many countries anyway, that women have somehow have been more careful and more, you know, more attentive to uh, the needs uh, of, of people. And so, of course, there has been this uh, observation uh, that, you know, uh, women leaders were doing better. And I think sometimes it can be a little car caricatural uh, to say so, because obviously we don't want to, to, to always, you know, focus uh, uh, like in a managerial discourse on the feminine qualities of uh, the leaders. But I think when you have a, a woman leader, it shows something about how a society works because this society has been able to put women uh, into uh, poly important political positions and to take responsibilities. And I think this is something, this is a symptom of evolved uh, society. So I think if you have, you know, more voice for women, I think the, it's really the only way to, you know, uh, get uh, the situation because we have been very pessimistic, but I think there is a solution for that. Thank you, Sandra, uh, by closing. Uh, positively. I hope that there is still some hope for all of us. Uh, I don't actually see any questions in our chat box. Uh, there was just question regarding the survey. So thank you, Massimiliano, that you shared okay. your survey with us. We will definitely fill it. So if there is a, uh, any question, the last one, you can share it with us and ask in our chat box. And if there is not, so we are getting i will wait for one more minute if there is any questions from our participants uh, otherwise we are getting to the end of our debate tonight uh, we could hear different perspectives on the topic i'm very grateful for it uh, thank all of you for sharing your experience with this and uh, the warmest thanks to our speakers uh, thank you sandra logier thank you for joining us tonight it was a pleasure Thank you all. It was so great uh, to, to exchange with, uh, with these different perspectives. It's uh, very enlightening. Thank you. Thank you, Katarzyna Haring, that you were here tonight with us and sharing some data and very interesting information from the Czech Republic. Thank you very much. The pleasure was really mine as well. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Massimiliano Mascarini, for joining us as uh, the 
only uh, male participant yeah, here nice. from our panelists. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure to be here, actually, and Thanks. also to represent the male category. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's very important. <laughs> yes, I think it is. Thank all of you for your contribution and very interesting inputs regarding the topic of the impact of pandemic on gender equality. I don't see any questions right now. So thanks also to our participants who have joined us today. And it was a pleasure to have you all uh, here tonight. And uh, let me close this debate and wish all of you nice evening to everyone, to all countries uh, which join us. Mm -hmm. And I hope that we will meet again in uh, under a better situation and uh, we still need hope and let's hope that the situation will uh, become better and thank you thank you very much thank Have you a nice evening bye 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 bye, bye. bye. bye.